Hey, and welcome back to our dirt modified race engine build with stone racing engines. This is a United States modified touring series A mod engine, and the class is rapidly growing in popularity all across the country, and especially the Midwest, because the USMTS has hit on the right combo of keeping racing affordable for the regular guy while also making for fantastic racing action for the fans in the stands. Last time around, we installed the cylinder heads and valve train, and now it's time to button this bad boy up so we can head over to the engine dyno and hear it sing. Now, the big curveball with a build like this is the pretty smart method that the USMTS has chosen to limit power production and cost to the racers. They've chosen to require every racer run a spec head from Brodix. This one is a Chevrolet, but there are also equivalent options for Ford and Mopar. Anyhow, to keep wily engine builders from massaging the heads, Brodix has written the word spec literally in the castings in both the intake and exhaust ports. If the tech official notices these markings have been altered in any way at all, the team is disqualified. Now, there's obviously other checks, but these spec markings in the most critical areas of the intake and exhaust ports are the big one. The thinking is that spec heads like this help keep costs down because the ports become the choke points and it becomes pointless to spend more money on super expensive parts because the heads simply won't allow making more power. So a smart engine builder like Jamie Stone is going to put a lot of thought into how to build the most effective engine around the strengths and limitations of these heads. For example, using a cam with more lift and duration will give more time for a flow limited intake port like these spec heads have to move more air and fuel into the combustion chambers. It's also important to match the induction to the heads. Here, Jamie and his dad, Roger, glue down the intake gaskets so they can't move and partially block the intake ports when the intake is bolted down. Then, a nice bead of silicone is applied to the china walls and we're ready to roll. The rule book leaves the choice of intake manifold largely open, but after much testing, Jamie says Edelbrock's Super Victor delivers the best results with this combination. But he also says you have to avoid the temptation to grab a grinder and just hog out the runners for better flow. Instead, this intake package agrees with the smaller intake runners the way the intake comes out of the box to help keep the velocity of the air and fuel entering the intake ports nice and high. In these shots, you can also see the hoses Jamie has already installed from the rear of the intake to the coolant outlet up front. Now this is a simple way to help remove coolant from both the front and rear of the engine at the same time and help eliminate hot spots. As we mentioned earlier, these race engines are run at the absolute red line lap after lap and protecting against overheating is paramount. These hoses connect to a billet aluminum thermostat riser at the water crossover made by Ware's machine. Now this especially makes for a super sanitary plumbing setup. Up front, engine accessories steal horsepower that could go to the rear wheels, so there's really nothing being spun off the crank pulley other than the water pump. There's no power steering, so no pump is needed there. Plus, the races are short enough that an alternator is rarely needed. Anyhow, this setup is made by Jones Racing Products and includes the water pump. Stock size pulleys can spin the water pump way too fast on a racetrack at racing speeds. And that not only burns horsepower, but it can also cause cavitation. This kit is designed with both the crank and the water pump pulleys specifically sized for typical racing RPMs so that the water pump isn't spun any faster than necessary. Kevco, the same company that provided the racing oil pan, also fabricates these high clearance aluminum valve covers. That AN fitting you see at the front is for the breather. An MSD Pro Billet distributor will be used to route the spark. Jamie doesn't worry about installing the distributor so that the engine is properly timed right now. Instead, it's just stabbed into place so he can measure and cut the custom wire plugs. It's gotta come back out to prime the oil pump later and will be installed correctly on the dyno. Now 
By the way, that black aluminum bar is the mount for the carburetor return spring. The last thing you want on a racetrack is a carburetor stuck at wide open throttle. So that kind of stuff is taken very seriously. And the last thing to go on before we head to the engine dyno is the Holley double pumper four barrel carburetor. It's sitting on a one inch open spacer to help improve signal to the Venturis. Now this carb is sized at 850 CFM, but interestingly, Jamie says he doesn't really worry about that. He works with a specialized carb builder and they will build a few different options with different Venturi sizes depending on the track and conditions. Jamie says it isn't unusual for teams to travel with maybe five different carburetors and swap them out depending on weather, track conditions, and even the race car chassis setup. Anyhow, that's all for now. Make sure to stay tuned as we'll be burning some race gas to see how this 415 cubic inch beast performs on the engine dyno next time. It's going to be fun.